We are going to have this on the Rift. Bring to the third, and Kobe bringing this one to you. Let's see what these teams can do for level one. I automatically sympathize with that butterfly Kogma because every few steps he tries to take flight and he just can't do it. Always oh, flopping back down onto oh, the ground. Oh, so close. Maybe no. next time you'll get it. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Oh, already. We'll see if Double Lift can carry from the ground this game. See them moving out. Looks like they're going to act as human wards here. Very curse like. Yeah, and dual red pots coming out for complexity. They want to fight wow. early and often. Wherever Chowster ganks, he's going to have to be careful because a red pot uh, will actually add a lot of damage as well, even at level one, and they can turn it around on him. I really like this. All the way back to season one, people buying the elixirs right off the mm -hmm. bat. We saw Voidboy doing it with blue, blue elixirs yesterday on uh, that Trindamir as well. Yeah, like Voidboy said he's putting that Trindamir up on the <laughs> shelf, so yeah, had enough of that. Live design found it. We got nerfed. <laughs> there you go. It actually came out today, didn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It did. These guys, though, for everyone watching, are not on they the They are not on the new. Live patch? Yeah, it's yeah. one patch back. One patch back, indeed. Not too much movement. The, fi the first, not first war, the second ward goes out. A few is what I wanted to say. The bushwhacks <laughs> acting as the ones that they don't really have down. There's going to be quite a bit of them here as Link sets up to handle himself in mid. It looks like we will be getting a one-on-one -on -one top here. Nick Wu going to be in Ooh. his natural habitat. That debonair Jace will be taking on Hotshot Shen. And he's actually starting with these wolves. So Nick will have a slight advantage. Hotshot's sharing the experience with Chaucer, so he'll have about half as much. Yep. And the late invade yep. is going to be dangerous here. They have a pink ward, and they're going to steal this oh. blue, but they back off with the Kale. So good. So good how they went back. They said, we're not going well, up through blue. They're going to head, right? They have the ward there. Yeah, the they're like, we don't want coming. anything to do. That was it. Like, even Italy didn't come. They didn't want to spear it. They're just going pure cautious. Yeah, there you go. That that ward definitely paid off for right, them very for sure. much. Uh, that's one of the things I was expecting a lot more people to do uh, before, earlier than this. So, figuring out what to do right off the bat. We can see them changing it up to keep himself safe in the beginning. Now returning to that lane a little bit late. There's only four to two CS there as they were able to grab the Wolves so they don't lose too much. But Chouster is looking pretty hungry right now and it looks like he's going for a fast blue take. Mm -hmm. There, There's a nice ward here on the blue side but it doesn't look like either lane will collapse and Chouster just gonna answer back with a blue still of his own. They even those out very nicely. Chaucer knowing what he has to do to keep himself in the game to help continue pressuring the lanes. We'll see if Lauda Mortis can keep it up as well. A big focus on him in this match, everyone. If they continue to focus Lauda Mortis, we've been saying it's just very hard for Complexity to get through this. Nick Wu taking some aggression up top. Chaucer looking safeguard in. He goes on his minion to look for some extra damage there. They find the Q, but he will not follow up. Yeah, because of that ward at the blue buff, there's no way Nick was going to get caught out with right. unawares. He he sensed that Chaucer was going to come top next. And since we have Jarvin coming to answer, this could turn bad for CLG. If he goes right into this bush, you can actually pull over there. Ooh, the aggression in the bottom lane. Oh my gosh, double lift almost going down the passive ticking. He has to throw oh. on barrier. Ooh, that expunge. Oh no, he still gets him after it wears out. It takes forever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Barrier actually only lasts for two seconds. That's not nearly long enough to soak oh, up all that the poison. the aggression back on the top lane now. They know that there's one in the bottom. There's a little bit of chaos on CLG's side, and they use it to their advantage. The red buff popped right there for Nick Wu as well, so that's going to be gone pretty soon here. He actually used it for the extra damage, not saving it to, to save himself from a gank or anything. See? Actually pushing him all the way back. Hotshot didn't even really decide to buy too much there. Coming in with the Dorans. He has a shield to come back. So it looks like he's going to try to sustain in lane as long as he can. Just use that health to get back up with his Vorpal Blades. Look around here. 26 to 24. 24 to 14 in that bottom lane though. So a quick lead taken in CS as Doublelift got pushed out of lane there. Yeah, I mean... That poison, too strong. It lasts for six seconds, whereas Barrier only lasts yeah. for two seconds. So there's and really kind of tried to time it. Do. He was like, there's a tick. There's yeah. a tick. Okay, now. But yeah, you're right. The only way that would have saved him if he actually used his Barrier earlier when they were taking auto attacks yeah. so that the full amount would be absorbed. Saving it that Ooh. late to deal with the poison didn't quite work out for him. So first blood, that is going to help Brunch a lot. And it turns out, you know, they said it before, uh, Brunch, oh, Lautomar's coming in for a little gank here through that pink ward. 
They were saying about brunch, you said. Uh, yeah, they were oh, saying about brunch. Or brunch tried out. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, double yeah. have taken a lot of damage. There it is again. He's going to be forced right out of the lane. A lot of Mortis didn't even have a factor in that fight other than being there, and they're able to push him out. He just got back. They're really giving Double Lift a hard time. They know since he doesn't have Vayne, they took the hyper carry. They still want to shut it down extra hard. Great ward by MIA. Yeah, it, if Loud Mortis had stayed up in that tri push instead of coming down before, they could have dove that turret to finish off Double Lift in that little instance right there but he had already jumped over the wall, expecting them to come a bit farther out, and now he's just been sitting there, wasting a little bit of time. Double if though, still has his flash. Even though he had uh, given up that Ooh. first blood, he's got another escape. There you go, Trooper putting on the pain in mid. But Link has not backed yet. That lane could change very much once he gets a little bit of resistance and regen in that kit. So we'll see what he can do. And we don't have a back from Trooper either. The mid lane has just been left to farm here. Yeah, what I was going to say before about uh, Brunchu in that bottom lane was that he actually tried out for Aphromoo's position that mm -hmm. Aphromoo's in right now, the support for Double Lift. And Double Lift said he wasn't trash, but this is the pick only him up. one. Yeah. The only one he said that wasn't trash. You're not Double trash, lift. but we're going to take Afro instead. But so. you can still have one of my search that says you're trash. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to first blood you. Thank you very yeah. much. So Hotshot, he definitely is doing a little bit better in lane with that Doran shield as he actually gets blasted away as Faint wears off. You can see them CSing out 40 to 38. Nick Wu holding strong in the lane. He bought himself a longsword to come back, actually, so he felt like he was doing all right in the defensive stage of everything. His red pot just now running yep. out, too, so that 250 gold did not give him much of an advantage in lane. Try to use it for that gank. And a little on to double lift, a little aggression there. They know MIA is low on mana here, so it's kind of some aggression. They will try to push him back out of the lane. He, both of them going for the double thorns by, too. Interesting. Nice yeah. little defensive item. I mean, Edward did that a while ago on support, <laughs> yep. and uh, I think it was Crepo was like, yeah, you know what? I punched the numbers. That's a great buy. It was a good find by Edward. Just nobody else uh, had, had done it before. Hotshot always has been a big fan of that item, though, so not surprised to see mm, right. Hotshot pick up one of his own. Doran's all over this game. There must be a sale going on. Seven minutes and 30 seconds into this one. That's 600 gold from First Blood and Assist helping out a little bit here. And Jupiter doing quite a good job in mid, giving Link some good harass. We see him not forced out for the blue, but his lane's actually all the way pushed here, so he's going to lose some CS as he goes for it. Double lift now again back in lane. He bought a longsword for himself. We'll have to see if he upgrades that into the Scepter. Yeah. Well, they have, they, both of them have the double uh, Doran's right, blade, yeah. so that's so much sustain already. Right, yeah. A vamp scepter on top of there. that would be <laughs> tremendous. It's been another 400 gold to get something I already have. The pickaxe quickly coming up for Brunch U. You know, being said is one of an, an all right buy. If you're going back with that much gold, pick it up. It's a great bit of damage. Looks like he's going to be skipping that vamp scepter. A lot of aggression, Ooh. though. Super. Guys going face to face. That's about the third time they've done that. I like the aggression coming out of these two in mid. And they're dead even on CS. Yep. Both of them picking up <laughs> core items in their build. Oh, Chowster. Oh, Chowster going over a ward. And he places a ward of his own at the blue buff. Perfect timing by him. Uh, Louder Mornis oh. doesn't know that that ward was placed. He's got to have a smile on his face right now. He may have seen, you know, just a hit from that flag toss coming in. And he is going to be able to stay there. Trooper moving over a little too early. He throws on the invulnerability, and the kick causes the spear to miss. The flash as well. A lot of Morris is forced in to hold mid now, and they might be able to steal blue off of this. Yeah, and they also traded the flash from middle for yeah. the ignite, which is actually a really good trade. Uh, Kale doesn't have any gap closes. She has a small speed boost from her heal, and that's it. You're right, they're going to steal this blue up. Charster actually wants that for his own energy regen since Link's got one already. There's a big difference, Kobe. Complexity also had the timer on blue, right? They didn't want to contest it again. Chouster went exactly when he from when he took it last time, and that's where CLG could start to grab a lead with those both blues. Yep. They used the timing to their advantage right there. Very predictable uh, invade. Not too big of a deal, but Chupor did pop his red pot as well. That will be ticking down. And they haven't gained much advantage from those early buys that they used. Nick Wu didn't get anything out of his either. And they actually placed more than one ward down. It wasn't safe enough just to have the blue. Chowster put oh. one down in the push. Brunchu taking some good damage as we saw a lot of Mortis heading top. This gank in the bottom gank in the bottom lane, rather, pressure in the bottom lane. Could definitely draw attention of the jungler. It's certainly drawing attention of Link. He's gonna look for a behind the turret kill here. The blue buff is on. He throws a bushwhack in there, so if anybody comes in, they're gonna be shredded out. 
And they are just going to sit and wait. That top gank actually going down as we did see Lada Mortis making the roll. Hotshot's going to fall first in this engagement. They're really going to want this in the bottom lane now. And you can see MIA and Brunch just holding each other right now. Yeah, so Link does walk back out over that ward. They know he's gone and they're safe now. But Hotshot saw a lot of mortars go up to that top lane. Those wards you were talking about yeah. at blue, they paced both of them. He the knew it was up, up in that area. There were red pings everywhere. And he still just gets dumped by the uh, the lane gank from Jarvan. It can still catch you off guard. He has two gap closers. Yeah. And since Hotshot's down, there's no Shen ultimate. Uh, but CLG still take advantage. Grab the trade for Dragon for top turret at least salvaging a little bit from that situation. Complexity, I gotta say, definitely looking better here in the early part of the game. It's a few things, you know, that you said earlier. If Lauda Mortis would have stayed in the tri-bush when Chowster came to gank, that's somewhere we would have seen Lauda Mortis dying before. They're making the right moves this time. It's paying off. The gold lead isn't that much, but that's because Counter Logic is... They know that this is going to be a tough game with what they've seen so far. And you see Afro there trying to shove the lane with the Glitter Lance. They want to push this turret down as early as they can. They know that since the top turret's already been taken, they need to get some map control back for themselves. This mid lane kind of has had a bit of aggression. I mean, the CS is still 94 to 90. When we saw Trooper flash away, that's still coming up off of cooldown quite a long time. We did see the Ignite of Link use. So if they go in, it's all about the abilities on them. Link has done a bit of roaming, but it's really going to come into play for Trooper once they get these five-on-five -five fights and he can start using that intervention. Link does have to be careful because the ultimate of Kale does mean they're not afraid oh, to tower dive. the stand united as well. He's not going to have the flash. It was just used. The invulnerability is there, and they're going to focus on him, looking, taking them taking steps in front of him so they can keep along with the kite. Nick Wu is going to be forced into a fight here. He tries to dodge into the bush and through the gate. Nice try in the mechanics there, but it was just too much coming from CLG. They pick up two kills of their own. I love that use of the Shen ultimate coming in for a, a three-man gank there. They don't even need the home guard boots. Just like hop all over there, and they're rewarded with a middle turret for themselves. There's that little bit of map control that they wanted. I know Nick Wu was around that spot, but that just shows, we said he didn't take teleport, how quick of an impact Hotshot has when he gets there instantly. Yeah, even though he died, he was off the map for a while. Yeah. Kind of caught them off guard. He even used that to turn it around. So it's two to two now. And the bottom under pressure. There we go. Chowster coming in on the golems. This is the second time here. We just saw Link doing the same thing to MIA and Brunchy in the bottom lane. They're just going buddies right now. They know they can't get any pressure. 94 to 103. So these guys going back and forth in CS. It's still going to stay just about even. I mean, that's the case in just about every lane right now, even the jungle. A needlessly large rod picked up here for Link. So wow. immediately, for the burst. those spears are going to start hurting <laughs> now. Get ready with your oohs and ahs, people. Or or if you're Jat, the j -j 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 -j. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we'll see what they can do as they clear out the lanes. Nick Wu's by, goes for the Brutalizer. Like you said, these guys love damage right off the bat. They don't want to do anything with the health. We see it's a little different hotshot. He got that giant's belt and the armor. Lot of Mortis and Trooper trying to put on the aggression. As you can see, Link taking a good bit of damage there. And they continue to place the wards out. Almost everybody has wards on Counter Logic's side. You'll see the wards placed for Call in the bottom lane, and they only have one. The Sightstone Stone is up, though, so they could put down some more. It's all the bottom lane. Look how much they are putting pressure on the bottom lane. They're forced to ward it twice. Yeah, it was. it's so deeply warded because there were all those repeat visits, <laughs> like you said, from Link and Chowster down there. They don't want to get caught off guard. Uh, Lee Sin is really good, actually, against Twitch, since there's absolutely no chance right. um, he'll be able to go invisible off that. Usually, people can just keep hitting Twitch and delay his in, uh, invisibility before he gets away, but Lee Sin can actually get vision of that. So I think it was around eight minutes for that blue. Again. So we're going to be seeing, yeah, they, they're putting the pressure towards that area once again. Do you see it's going to be Link? So third blue of the game. We'll be going over to CLG here. Remember, Complexity was able to get the first one on the invade, but it's not been helping the mid lane there uh, ever since. I like this, that they're staying with the same strategy. They're following up, not letting the blue buff drop over the course of the game. They're sticking with it every time it pops up. They go grab that with two minutes left on Dragon. I would actually think that CLG might start warding up a little bit deeper so that they'll be in position to grab that one. Pressure on a lot of Mortis. This is where it could start getting sticky for complexity. They get out there, but this is going to be low health. Counter Logic Gaming may want to make a move off of this. Ooh, there we go. 
This is being number Watch one. the coattails there. You can see what that W for Nick. Well, that wasn't W. Those are just auto attacks. Actually, just a bit of damage. We'll see him pushing all the wards here. Look at this. Four wards on your screen right there. Two from each team. The bushwhacks go down as well. Try and increase that vision and shred that armor. The split push starts in from Hotshot. Yeah, Hotshot definitely at home with this strategy. <laughs> I think that top tower could be his any moment. Actually, he was at 75% health, so it's going to take a while for him to crack at that one. And Nick Wu may make it to that top lane as the minion wave is there taking direction of the minions, so they're not going to get extra damage. There's the blast. Nick Wu saves the turret. And still 120 to 114 in that lane. He's just one assist behind Hotshot there. So like we said, he is keeping himself up to par with that play. The gold lead still very minimal between both of these teams. The picture of this map right now is just the quintessential CLG strategy. They have Hotshot split pushing top, double lift farming his brains out bottom, and the rest of them just trying to keep up the pressure uh, in that middle. And some more wards actually really need to come out from CLG. You can see it's blanketed and blue right now, but very few right. purple eyeballs up. They actually just put all of those wards down recently, which is crazy. We had those wards down in the bottom lane, but then Complexity is like, we have too much on our side. They're not ganking us down in the bottom of these lanes anymore. Dragon comes back up in eight. They have a lot of wards on the top side, but that's not going to help for the bottom, so we'll see how they take to this. Again, Hotshot taking the opportunity, going to split push. He knows that they're <laughs> going to fight over right, Dragon. Right, it's turret for Dragon here. So as long as CLG are delaying Complexity, then they're winning this fight right now, and it's going to take Jace a while to get there. If CLG engage now, it could be a five on four. And they have the teleport, like we said. That was a big factor before. The Stand United is up, rather. MIA taking more than half his health from a full extended spirit. It only takes a few shots from Double Lift. It looks like Lauda Mortis goes right onto him. The one heal from Link back to full. Flash is forced out here. They do grab that dragon up. They grab the, the turret up top as well. Complexity is forced to run. This is a chess match just playing out perfectly for CLG. They're expecting every move from Complexity and outplaying them before they even get there. CLG, they wanted them to go for Dragon. Chaucer had faith in his smite stealing ability, and they wanted them to be grouped up in that Dragon Pit so that Link can get those free spears. You saw tanking Tarek down to 30% or so. An easy follow-up granted them a kill. They get the Dragon, they get the turret. That was just a huge snowball for them. That is the 4,000 gold lead. It's been quite close since. Now it's about 18 minutes in. Complexity, or complexity, CLG finds you know, the move that they wanted. The door was open there for them to go for the dragon. They were easily able to come in. Lauda Mortis, that dive onto double if didn't give as much damage as he wanted. And the heal from Link, I really think, turned them off of just that fight altogether. Infinity Edge completed, now on to Kog'Maw. They tried to stop the vein, but can they stop the cog? Yeah, Kog'Maw Infinity Edge is really scary. He's got so much range now. And Chooper, you, you're going to have to time your ultimate really well for complexity in the next team fight. They still have a good chance. Um, if he's able to block that key spear, that will be maybe half of someone's life bar right now because Nidalee has not gone back to purchase the other half of her death cap yet. Uh, she actually, uh, with that Phoenix Codex, could go a lot of routes right now. So we'll have to see where he, he ends up with that. But Hotshot, he's got the beginnings of the Randuin's Oban there with the Warden's Mail, and that was what Double Lift always complains about as an AD carry. <laughs> The, the bane of his existence that's going to be so good against Twitch because Hotshot can force Twitch to attack him. Yep. And you're forcing that 20% attack speed reduction on him. They can get to the back line and do it again like they just pounced on Link. That's such a good engagement, as you said. Giving up the red here to Brunch you. We'll see if anything says they are looking for a fight right now. Just the regular sight stones. We don't see the locket of the Iron Solari really coming out yet. For either of the junglers, Lauda Mortis is on that Kindle, uh, Kindle gem. But he hasn't been able to complete too much. Went for Ninja Tabi, trying to get himself fight ready. Spear coming out, hits Chooper, almost brings him back to half. And just having that ability in the game where everybody kind of knows we, we're not really fight ready anymore because of one spear. Yeah, Chooper only has two items there. He's got some, some shoes and a little sword. Oh, man. He upgraded to home guard very early which is not a bad buy because they're already getting pressured so far into their base. They've lost a True. lot of turrets. So uh, he definitely needs to be able to get back out there and with the rest of his team as soon as possible. This mid lane pink ward, 
actually going to do a lot for CLG because they'll see where Twitch is coming from. So is it not a huge factor that Trooper kind of far behind on items because the ultimate's really what's coming into play for him now and it'll be all right if he can get kind of built up in the next five, ten minutes? Well, since, uh, like I said, Ch uh, Hotshot oh, can force... Oh, my goodness. That's painful. Hotshot can force Brunch to attack him, so Complexity Ooh. really needs another big damage source and they need Trooper to be that. Nick oh, Ooze is going right, to be trying right. to, uh, to fire his shockwaves over and over from the back line and it's going to be very dangerous for them. The death cap is finally completed. He went up going with that route. And you see him maxing damage again. Nick Wu, the team you said likes to do that. The BF sword after the Brutalizer and Vampire Acceptor. He's not even going for any type of mitigation. On the damage brunch, you! Great hands there, catches one behind the turret. It looks like he's going to be forced back, so they don't have the Infinity Edge for the fight. It's really going to have to go on somebody with a dive here. Oh my gosh, that's two out of the fight now with low health. Dragons up in two, and this is how we saw Mandatory Cloud just absolutely pick apart teams last week. Basically, these are free objectives for CLG right now. Nobody on Complexity has any magic resistance bought at all. They don't have the beginnings of an Aegis. It looks like he's probably going to be going Locket first on that Jarvan, so there's not a lot of hope in sight for them, and since they are all building damage, none of them even has health to back it up. They have no regen. There's no uh, team auras there to build off of. It's really looking dire for them, because all Link has to do is land a couple spears. And so CLG is going to put a right. high priority on uh, keeping blue buffs up for him. As long as they have blue buffs up on Link, they can take whatever they want. They've been doing a good job of it. Trooper actually seems like he's going to build into a haunting guys here as he put together the tomb in the crystal. So that just may show how hurt he is for that gold. 7,800 right now coming in for Link to that 6,200 of Trooper. It's really starting to separate for these two teams. The CS is still relatively close in every lane from the supports of the jungles as well. These objectives are coming into play now. The 4-2 to two and the 5-3 to three in kills and turrets really starting to sway the game. This is really uh, the perfect situation for CLG. They can split push with Hotshot because he's so strong right now, so tanky. He even has wards for himself, and there's wards all over the uh, Complexity's jungle. So he can just go down there as much as he wants and wait while the rest of his team sieges up a tower and Link just throws spears, uh, playing target practice over there until he finally finds a target. They are kind of hovering around this top side, keeping that pressure towards that blue area. More wards. Now the wards coming out for CLG. You can see they've placed down three, four bushwhacks going around in that area. I think Joe was saying it before as well. It's just bushwhacks everywhere. All the Nidalee traps have been being placed in these games when usually you only see a few. They just litter the entire map. And it looks like the Baron Dance will begin. Double lift is going to be able to take it down quite fast on Kogma. Let's see what he is going for his build. He's got actually five on that W. The Bayar Arcane Barrage, and then he goes to level the Void Ooze next instead of giving the, and getting that Q on the passive attack speed. Ooh, Complexity got tricked out a little bit. They went to go check Dragon. They realize CLG are not on the map, and they're rushing over to Baron, but it's too late. It goes down. Looks like they're going to grab it. They are hightailing it towards the top side. Exit stage left for these guys. They don't even want an engagement. They want to say, you can chase us all you want. Hot shots in the bottom lane being split shot GG. And we're going to push the top lane. They're losing every objective that CLG went for. They, they went to check the dragon, so they lose Baron. Plus, they're going to take a lot of damage on this bottom turret. It looks like they are just out of sorts. They don't know where to go. Sending Trooper down to try and stop Hot Shot, but Really, what they have to do would be catch someone off guard out of position, yep. and that's not going to happen from CLG right now. CLG would love to get caught out of position. I think they could actually <laughs> handle it and kind of bait the fight in for themselves. They are very strong right now. They've quickly made it to 8,000 gold. We can see Trooper relying on the home guards just to defend against Shen's hits on the turret. He's really not even trying to use abilities back, Brunch you. That damage is so amazing. It's game-changing on every throw if it hits. Well, Link doesn't even have to choose his targets right now. Any person yeah, that he hits that's... is going to take a giant junk of their life because they didn't build the, those defensive stats. Well, Complexity is going to have to put on their tap dancing shoes because with these spears coming out again! Actually, that one went right over Loud Mortis. Hit MIA. So you can see even Tarek taking a good bit of damage. These guys, like you said, don't have a chance to build the magic resistance they need right now. And with that armor or a stack, it's not really what they need. It is only two to four right now, 
but the difference looks so much more commanding when you look at the team fights because complexity are just sitting there dodging shots for as long as they can until they until one hits and then they have to go all the way back to base the buy is coming out here the 80 carries hotshot has three people on him finally yeah this is this is old school this is season two hotshot right here we'll see how long <laughs> it takes for them he's not going to be able to get out of this one but the team is wreaking havoc at the top of the base oh my gosh he, he, i'm a liar he made me a liar. He gets out of that. Finally goes down. Thank you, Nick Wu. And it looks like they're going to be able to get the inhibitor. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Wu's got your back there, Riv. <laughs> Woo! It's close. It's close. So they do take down Hotshot, but they lose an inhibitor turret and an inhibitor. Not the best of trades. At least they got one Baron buff off the road there. 24 seconds, though, means Hotshot will be back in time to stop this siege as well. So Hotshot picks up a Randuin's, didn't get the home guard yet, so I figure that in 15 seconds, if they are in the face of complexity, this may be a Stand United initiation to come in on complexity here. Good damage onto MIA, that means initiate even more. If they continue to pressure on the turret, that's two down. They're making the run, three seconds for Hotshot to come up here. A slow onto Link, they try to get some movement there. It was just that one slow was just too much for the reinitiate. They actually could just rate straight march down this midline. They have um, that same United. That one. Yeah, they're they're fine with this. They have got this game so well in hand. Three to four is the score of this game. Yeah, but complexity are running for their lives. They have to right now. All of the health and damage that was able to be built just versus the damage. Red Elixir is coming out and being popped right now for Complexity before they're even in the fight. They know this may be a last stand. A Dazzle comes out. They get double lift. He only has the barrier, not the cleanse. He throws that on. He gets a bit of damage that he needs or get a sustain he needs. And that was actually the safeguard. So his summoner is still up. CLG is fighting with the knowledge that they have such an upper hand. They didn't even blow the summoner spells out of being scared in the initiation of that fight. They are still standing strong, and it looks like they may be able to take this inhibitor out. A little too much pressure going down. That next minion wave could mean it for them. Jumping back and forth, trying to harass Nick Wu here. They know a good amount of damage comes from him. They push them off. They find the inhibitor, Kobe, and they just look to toy with complexity now. You can see how desperate complexity are for defensive stats. Tarek has a red pot right now, just for the extra HP, and that yep. actually made him survive the last few spears from the engage. Going around, the Andrews finally finished up for Trooper here. They can get a bit more damage over time on these fights, but that's what they're not lasting, is time. They're very fast. The spear's completely taking out Brunch U and MIA in multiple hits. If they can't dodge those spears, these fights start at such a disadvantage for Complexity. There's not really a way for Complexity to get the gold lead back either. They're all buying these consumables, red pots on three right, out of right. four members, and CLG have complete control of the map. So they can easily just keep on grabbing up all the dragons, all the barons, anything that they want. Complexity's base is just in ruins right now, and CLG are coming down bottom to finish this one off. Link actually is just going to solo up that dragon. He's going quite strong on it. Looks like he's going to go a little help here from his teammates, as, like you said, could be one final push coming in. A ward there may have seen. They look to grab one out. This could be a quick turnaround for them. They take down Link, but they have to get back to the base. The push can still be strong from CLG. That is huge for complexity. They did all build damage, so it means that late right. game they can still pull stuff like that, where it's a bush gank and finish off somebody that they do catch out. We heard what Element said in the interview. You're just waiting to catch somebody out right here, and this may be it. They go to double lift. Great polymorph onto Lotto Mortis. He can't do the damage. Vulnerability onto Tarek. Can they get the damage they want out of this? There goes Chouster. Link is still down from the previous engagement. They could find themselves in trouble here. Double lift goes down. The Cathy and Surprise to still do quite a bit of damage, but it's not going to be any health bars that he wants to hit. CLG has Hotshot come in here. Aphromu going for the base. They're split both ways, Kobe. <laughs> Complexity caught out Link and uh, annihilated him early, but CLG felt like they were so strong, they kept on pushing right into that four versus five man engage. And now, Ooh. Lulu, Aphromu going to have to speed himself away. 8-0, that 80% slow pretty much shutting down a lot of Mortis. But here's the chase going. It's almost a slow motion chase. Hotshot says, what? What's going on? Come on, bring it. He's so taunting them. He doesn't want them to go back. They're going to start spawning. They're going to start running down, and Hotshot wants to keep them there. He can always go back to base. It actually doesn't have Stand United, so he's got to be careful with what he does here. He taunts out. It's going to be a lot of damage coming in. The faint for the shield, and that just not what brunch you expected. Yeah, I was saying, Hotshot 
went back and forth right there. He was just trying to bait them in for Link. You can see him walking down here this map. He finally gets there, uses a flash to come heal, hot shot. What a bro, they don't go down. And so CLG gonna pick up their red buff and they're just gonna do a two-man push on this bomb turret. Like I said, they feel so confident right now, even though it's six to six, they, they just have all the power in this game right now. Baron up in 10, 12 yep. seconds, and they're probably just going to take that really quickly with only a few members. What a bro by Link. Wasting the flash to save Hotshot there. Looks like he will have enough time to pretty much vorpal his health back to normal. He'll be able to engage on this fight. He looks to stay with the team now. Like I said, it would have been scary if he would have pushed back off that fight because of the Stand United being down. But now poised to take Baron once again, Kobe. 7,000 gold in the lead. This kill score is tied right now, but it's 8-4 to four in turrets. Means a lot with that global pressure. This puts complexity in a really tough situation. They have to make the choice where they're going to have their last stand. Do you give up that inhibitor? Probably yes for the top one. There's no turret. You at least need a turret to fight with. So when CLG goes bottom, you really don't want to give up all three inhibitors at once because that makes the super minions ridiculously strong. But you do want to fight with the double turrets so if they're not going to catch someone out then there they go they'll just initiate right on this in, uh first inhibitor actually they see hotshot and chaucer push up and you saw a lot of mortis was like all right i'll run by you guys if i can get right to double lift chuber taking a good shot right there but they got some good sustain as well that kale heal and the terra heal coming in but that's all to negate one ability coming from link that he can do over and over again so Let's see what they can do. They're guarding the last one. Hotshot able to get hits in there. MIA still taking those spears. We'll see if they can get this inhibitor. One for Lauda Mortis as well. They're just throwing the medicine everywhere right now. Hotshot stays in the front here. That Baron buff ticking away for them. And Complexity knows they can't get initiation. He doesn't even want to dazzle Ter or Hotshot. The one saving grace for uh, Complexity right now is that Link does not have a blue buff at least. Yeah. So he's slowly running out of mana. And even if they were starting to build that magic resistance, the Void Staff is already on Link. MIA walking too few many steps into the fight. He tries to get the help from Lada Mortis as they dive in. Nick Wu just on the outside. They're clearing health bars pretty good right here. Double Lift has not had the chance to kite and fire. The damage is going out. We've seen MIA go down so far in this fight. It's going to be Lada Mortis next as Double Lift finds himself a kill. A great Shock Blast coming out, taking down Aphromu. And Trooper is forced out of the fight. The invulnerability has been used defensively. It's only Trooper and Brunch to hold the base. And CLG looks to push on. Yeah, or Aphromu, the only casualty so far. Trooper still going to fight valiantly with those home guard boots. But three inhibitors down means that they are going to march March on those Nexus turrets. It could be quite strong as well. They have a full super wave top. One coming in mid. That river right now has the next line for bottom. So it looks like they may not even need that one. They're going to pressure this first turret. Kobe coming in quite strong. A 33 minute game here for Complexity and Counter Logic Gaming. It looks like it'll go for a few more as Complexity, or CLG rather, heads out of the base. They back off and they're going to make them wait. They don't want to throw this away. All of Complexity back up here. nicku has got a few more seconds, so they don't feel like dying. They'll just go back by real quick and make the best of that Baron buff return to finish the job. Double F actually just going to get that red buff, too. He's got plenty of little flowers circling him. <laughs> so coming into this, we said Complexity likes to build damage, right? And we can see that they like to build damage. There's hardly any defense besides a locket, Jarvan building the Wardens, right? So where do you have to change that when you see it coming into game? Is there a factor of you're not going to get much gold here to here if you're already down? Right? Where do they need to change that? Was it the 20-minute mark? Do they need to start knowing to build defense at some point? Well, when you're against a middley, uh, Runic Bulwark is really a really important item. So that have needed to come out already. Yeah, because everybody is going to have to have at least some magic resist. Like we saw there, the, the spears on any one of these targets just takes them out of the fight before right. it's even started. And CLJ can just take advantage of that after you already have to back off. The kills, oh you don't even have to get kills. So There's just, the there taunt in on MIA. They have wards all over the place, and you can see it just activating the fight. They thought to fight this outside of their base, but reality, the minions are giving CLG vision as well. So they knew Complexity was trying something tricky, but I guess they've had to, Kobe. It's the last stretch here. A last-ditch effort as Complexity, or CLG, looks at this last turret. Home guard coming in for Lada Mortis as he dives towards the back line. They get one, and they've got CLG to turn their eyes away from the Nexus. MIA catches another spear.
clear. They're trying to get themselves back. Nick Wu actually used that on a minion to get himself out of danger. They dodged that spear as CLG puts up a human wall between them and the fountain. And they look to take down the Nexus here versus Complexity. The kills are coming out, but it's going to be CLG on top at 35 minutes.